Hey there. Welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike. But in this episode, I'm actually not going to be talking about my collection. I'm going to be talking about my friend Andrew Vaughn's toy collection. Now, uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might have... You might recall I had Andrew Vaughn on the show as a guest um, back in July 2019. It was episode 41, and we did an episode together called The 10 Best Toys in My Collection. So hi, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and I've got a guest uh, today, my second guest ever, and this guy's actually here live with me yeah. in studio. This is uh, my old came all the way. <laughs> yeah, my old friend Andrew. Uh, yeah, Andrew, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been friends with Mike since two thousand one, and I moved to Sackville. We started working together at Blockbuster. Uh, since then, uh, I'm uh, I've been doing stand up comedy for the last nine years in Halifax and around the country and stuff like that. And so, when I have a little bit of money, I like to spend it on toys and stuff when I can waste it. It hasn't been a lot in the last few years, but. Uh, yeah, but, but because of you, I've had a bit of a toy collection, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to try and keep this episode light. Um, this channel is dedicated to toys, after all. But it it might be difficult. So, on March 18th, Andrew passed away, and it was pretty unexpected. Uh, he was only 36 years old. Um, from what I'm told, he had a blood clot. And it, you know, went to his heart while he was sleeping. So, uh, you know, at least he went peacefully. Now, Andrew was a big guy. And he didn't always take care of himself. So, I was always worried that I would lose Andrew, uh, you know, too soon. But, never this soon. Okay. So, I've taken a minute... To compose myself, um, I was really having a hard time with that introduction, um, and to be honest, I was I, I was talking about a couple other depressing things, and I really don't want this video to be depressing. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna move on, and I want to talk a little bit more about um, my uh, my friendship with Andrew, and then we're gonna move on into talking about his toy collection. So let's get on with things. I met Andrew. It was 2001. I was already working at Blockbuster Video uh, here in a suburb of Halifax, uh, Sackville, which is where I grew up. And uh, Andrew was from a smaller town called Bridgewater, um, and he just moved here. Um, he was staying with his brother here in Sackville, and he got a job at the Blockbuster where I worked. And we became like really good friends Pretty much almost immediately. We bonded over uh, a couple of things really quickly. So for one, uh, it was movies. We both loved movies. And uh, we've seen a ton of movies together over the years. Um, I can't keep track of how many. But uh, I, I loved seeing movies with Andrew. And we could like talk about them and kind of pick them apart afterwards. Um, his favorite movies were um, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie from, I think, what, 1990. Um, I, th I think he's told me before that was the first movie he ever saw in theaters, and uh, yeah, he loved it. And then also Train Spotting was one of his other favorites. So if you haven't seen either of those, I, uh, I really recommend you do, because, yeah, I love both those movies as well. Um, but, yeah, I was about five and a half years older than Andrew and like I said I was a shift supervisor um he was new in town so he didn't really know anybody and yeah he really took to me I think he kind of like looked up to me to some degree and uh yeah I remember the first time he came over to my house to hang out he was really surprised to see that I had all this stuff I had this collection no it was nothing it was nothing quite like this back then but at that time, in the early 2000s, I was collecting probably mostly Star Wars figures. And I had two big shelves full of all my Star Wars figures on display. Um, plus, I had multiple bookshelves full of my comic book collection. And multiple long boxes in my closet full of comic books. And I remember Andrew being really shocked by that stuff. And he was like, 
you know, I didn't know you collected this stuff because you seem like a cool guy. You have a girlfriend and stuff and like, how can you be such a nerd? And Andrew told me about, like, he was really passionate about comic books and toys when he was younger, but then he was, he was bullied about it. And I don't know, maybe it's because he was a bigger kid and stuff. He, he just had a harder time with it. So he kind of dropped all that stuff uh, in his teenage years to avoid anybody making fun of him for it. And I told him that, you know, that was nonsense. And, you know, he doesn't have to worry about that stuff now, you know, because now he's like an adult. Um, so I encouraged him to get back into collecting. And um, I started him off pretty strong. I actually had double copies of a couple of comic books. Um, some of them were the very first Venom appearance in Amazing Spider-Man issues 299 and 300. And I remember even then those books were valued at probably, um, like, well, at least Amazing Spider-Man 300, which is credited as kind of the first full Venom appearance. That was valued at, like, say, 100, 150 bucks at the time. And he, I remember he was just so grateful uh, that I was gifting these to him. But, you know, I... I just wanted him to start off collecting and I could tell that he was really passionate about it. And after I gifted him those comic books, he, uh, yeah, he started collecting, uh, pretty vigorously and he built up a pretty good comic book collection and a pretty good toy collection from there on out. So once Andrew started collecting again, um, we did have a lot of shared passions, uh, but we also had some, there were some differences as well, probably somewhat because of the age difference. Um, like we both liked superheroes. So um, I was, you know, really into Spider-Man and all that stuff. And so was Andrew. But I think he was probably more of a DC guy where I was more of a Marvel guy. So yeah, he, he liked things like Batman and Superman and Catwoman and things like that. So yeah, he was pretty into DC comics. Uh, he was really into uh, the Ninja Turtles. Where I liked the Turtles, but it, I, it wasn't one of my main collections. Uh, you know, I like G.I. Joe and Transformers because I grew up in the 80s but Andrew was more you know it was the later 80s and into the 90s so he really liked the Ninja Turtles and he really liked the Power Rangers which is not something that I was ever into and another thing that he was really into was wrestling um he was like super into wrestling um, I liked wrestling when I was a little kid and at that period in time that's kind of the heyday of Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man and um, so yeah, I really liked that 80s wrestling when it used to be on Saturday mornings. But Andrew was kind of into it more in the 90s when it was more, uh, I think, geared towards adults. And you had the guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. And that, that's really what he was, was into. And uh, even when he was a kid, now I didn't know him when he was a teenager, but he had like a backyard wrestling federation. So yeah, I didn't know Andrew back then, so I had to borrow that wrestling footage from a mutual friend of ours, Matt Dagley. Uh, Matt Dagley has always been into kind of the audio-visual stuff. He's always shooting stuff with his camera, and um, him and Andrew had done lots of weird and fun little videos together. <laughs> One of my favorite things that Matt and Andrew did together was every year we have a sci-fi convention here in Halifax and it's called HalCon. And so Matt would get a press pass and he would send Andrew into HalCon as kind of a man on the street and he'd do uh, funny little interviews with the people he encountered. Uh, so they did that in both 2011 and 2012. You can find the clips on Matt's uh, YouTube page. So if you want to look up Andrew Vaughn at HalCon, you can watch the full clips, but but they're pretty fun. We're here at HalCon 2011 in downtown, beautiful downtown HalCon. Getting ready to go inside now and to talk to some nerds, geeks, people, maybe girls. Anyway, it should be interesting. Um, and I'm gonna act like a complete asshole probably and look like a complete asshole. What's that thing I just did with my eye? The, my little retarded wink, eh, that should charm the lady. 30 words or less, how much do you hate Michael Bay? 
Andrew Vine here, back again at HowlCon 2012. I'm really excited to go in there with lots of people here. They got their costumes on. I'm going to see some shit, try to buy some stuff, interview some people. Uh, I got a special costume in store for you, and uh, I'm going to give away some prizes. So let's go on in and check it out. One, two, one, two, three, four. I don't know if I Andrew, uh, he's always been a really creative guy. He likes to create content and he likes to entertain. You know, that's evident by his, you know, his early days doing the backyard wrestling, which, you know, him and his friends in Bridgewater took very seriously, coming up with storylines and creating new characters and videotaping all this stuff. When Andrew went to university, um, he got a show on the uh, local college radio station, which was uh, CHSR 97.9 FM in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And uh, so he had a wrestling show on there, uh, as well as he had a show where he just played music. Um, and that's where he first developed uh, the persona Johnny Everlove. Um, and so, yeah, he would do these shows in this character. And he was really proud of the work he did on the radio there. And I think that really kind of got him out of his shell with being able to, to talk to people. Um, he won some awards for his radio show. Now, I don't think these were really anything all that prestigious or anything, but he was, uh, he was very proud of them. Uh, and, you know, he had them hanging on his wall uh, right till the end. Um, and then when he moved back to Halifax and we kind of got to reconnect after he'd been away for a couple of years, um, you know, he really got into writing. And he was writing, he was writing everything. He was writing scripts, um, and he was writing a novel, short stories, you know, and anything you could think of. He was always just trying to find something creative to work on. And uh, I, I'm a bit of a writer too. I haven't done much in the last few years, but there was times when I was working on scripts and stuff, and uh, I would often ask people to read my material and provide feedback. And Andrew was always the one that I was most eager to share with because not only would I give him something to review, he would give me something back and we could be honest with one another. And he really understood writing more than, you know, everybody's opinion was important to me, whether it was Vanessa or my mom uh, or my buddy Miguel reading it. But, you know, Andrew, he took uh, creative writing and he, you know, we were into the same stuff. You know, if I was writing some, a science fiction script, you know, Vanessa doesn't really know much about science fiction, but Andrew has seen the movies I have. He's read the same comic books I had. So yeah, he kind of knew where I was coming from and you could tell when something seemed derivative or something was lacking. And yeah, I really cherished Andrew's feedback on all that stuff. Um, I really do miss giving each other notes on our writing. So, uh, when I started a toy blog, um, that's what I first did to kind of start talking about toys before I moved on to YouTube. Uh, Andrew started a toy blog as well. So you can still find my blog. It's called Mike's Collection.wordpress.com, and you can find years worth of toy reviews. Unfortunately, Andrew's toy blog is no longer available, um, but he had a blog called The Hall of Justice, which is kind of a pun on the, uh, the Justice League's headquarters, The Hall of Justice, but instead of H. A L L. It was H A U L, referring to a hall of toys. Um, so yeah, he did that for a little while, um, and then he started doing uh, YouTube videos. He was doing this way before me, and he kind of brought back his Johnny uh, Everlove persona, and he would just do these videos where he would just talk about whatever was going on in his life. Um, and I'll be honest, they were pretty tough to sit through. He posted a lot. And I would, I would sit through a lot of Johnny Everlove videos. But I thought what I would do is something that I used to like to do on my radio show when I used to do it, which was my annual Christmas wish list. So I thought I'd do that and get it up here as a special Christmas episode of the Johnny Everlove show. I'm having a me morning, and by me morning it means that I'm not doing jack shit because I'm hungover. I'm actually so hungover that I feel like I've hit the reset button got drunk again, and got hung over twice. Does that make any sense? It doesn't have to, because I'm really fucking hung over. And then uh, Andrew got into podcasting. I don't know how many of his old podcasts are available out there. They might be on YouTube. They might be on an old blog somewhere. Um, but he had a Johnny Everlove uh, podcast where he, again, just by himself, just kind of ranted about whatever was going on in his life. Um, I sat through a lot of those. 
Um, but then I thought they were a lot more entertaining when he brought our friend Adam on board. So Andrew and Adam did a podcast together called the Double A Podcast. I'm not sure if those are still out there, but they would talk about movies and stuff. That was, you know, a little more engaging. And uh, most recently, he's been doing a podcast um, called the Boys Club Podcast, which is a comedy-focused podcast, which he does with one of his uh, his good comedy buddies, Travis Lindsay. Um, I think they're they've got maybe 70-ish episodes out there that are available on his website. So if you want to check out the Boys Club podcast, you could definitely do that. Um, so speaking of comedy, um, when Andrew passed away, it was really heartwarming to see all the messages that everybody put on his Facebook. And so many of them are from comedians, not just local comedians, but comedians that have come through town, that have toured with Andrew. Andrew has done some shows, you know, elsewhere in Canada. He's been to Ontario and elsewhere in the Maritimes. So he's interacted with a lot of comedians over the 10 years he's been doing comedy. Um, and it was just, it's really great to see how they hold him in such high regard. Um, hearing messages, seeing what they wrote. Um, yeah, it, it was crazy just how important he became to the local comedy scene. Because I remember when he started, uh, I went to his first show. I went to his first bunch of shows. And yeah, it, it was pretty rough um, early on. And... It, but Andrew was a total workhorse when it came to comedy, and I think that's why people respect him so much is because, yeah, he, once he found comedy, that was his true thing. He said, okay, you know, I was doing little movie trailers, and I was doing podcasts, and I was doing, you know, writing novels, and I think he, he put a lot of that stuff aside when he found comedy. He was like, this is my thing, and uh, yeah, he, he worked harder than anybody at it. Uh, he was constantly promoting uh, and he really helped build up a lot of other comedians around town and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I'd recommend you check out some of Andrew's comedy. He's got some videos, uh, on YouTube, not nearly as much as he should, because he's after 10 years, he's done, I can't even imagine how many different sets. And unfortunately he doesn't have very many of them posted. There is some video out there you can find. Um, but I would, what I would probably most strongly recommend is you go on iTunes and you get his comedy album, which was called Too Fat to Go-Kart. Um, yeah, I was there at the filming of his comedy album, so you might even hear my chuckles in the audience a little bit. But uh, yeah, check that out. Um, so like I said, there's lots of ways you can check out Andrew's comedy. Uh, I'll, I have a little bit of it here to show you. Um, Andrew, being a bigger guy, and whenever he got his hair cut and he had the sides all shaved up and the top slicked back, he used to make jokes about how he looked like Kim Jong-un. Uh, and he also made jokes about how he looked like a big lesbian, uh, specifically the character of Big Boo from Orange is the New Black. So here's a little clip of him kind of making fun of his, his look a little bit. Trying to look nice for you guys tonight. Thank you. I went out and got my hair cut earlier today. I like getting my hair cut and styled like this because it gets me out of a lot of trouble. Like, I was speeding a little while ago. Shouldn't have been speeding. I know. Cop pulled me over. And he goes, sir, do you know how fast you were going? And I went, sir, did you just assume my gender? <laughs> no fucking ticket. It was incredible. <laughs> I'm going to do it every time. I always wondered why God gave me these titties and now I know. <laughs> So that comedy footage um, I borrowed from another one of Andrew's friends, Sarah McClellan. She had it up on her YouTube page. Um, she hosts uh, a video podcast called the Intoxicated Podcast, T-A-L-K, Toxicated, um, which is based here in Halifax. And she, most episodes, she interviews local comedians. And Andrew was a regular on her show. Um and they've got hours of footage of them sitting around talking about comedy and various other things. So uh, I haven't even watched all that footage because sometimes they'd post that there was a new episode and I'd look and it was like four hours long. And I was like, but uh, I'm very thankful that stuff exists. So I don't really know Sarah, but, uh, you know, I'm thankful to her to having so much video footage of Andrew available that uh, I can tune in and watch whenever I'm missing the big guy. So thank you, Sarah, for that footage. Um, so... I guess I'm pretty much ready to move on and start talking about Andrew's collection, since that's what I told you this episode was going to be about. Um, I have 
so many memories of Andrew. And after, you know, 20 years, I could talk a long time about all the things we did. But, uh, you know, there were so many birthday parties, uh, Christmas parties, you know, Halloween parties were always fun. Andrew, Andrew always had, you know, entertaining Halloween costumes. Um, I don't know. We we just had so many good times together. So many nights just sitting up late drinking, um, playing poker together. Actually, I've got a photo here, which is, I think it's maybe the second last time I saw Andrew. Um, it was, uh, sometime maybe around the holidays that Andrew had come over and played poker. You can see Andrew up there at the top of this image here sitting there playing poker with my mother-in-law Rochelle and everything so yeah Andrew was close with all my friends and he's close with my family and uh yeah we're really gonna miss having him around for all that stuff so if the poker game was the second last time I hung out with Andrew I believe the last time that I hung out with Andrew was when we went toy shopping uh and I think it was boxing day there was a uh there's a local comic book shop here um, called Giant Robot Comics. And on the 26th of December every year, they have a buy two, get one free sale. And so, yeah, me and Andrew had gone to that and bought a few toys. I remember Andrew bought all Funko Pops. And, yeah, so, you know, I've been talking to him regularly since then. But I, I think that was the last time we hung out. He's out shopping for toys. So, all right, so we are going to start talking about toys now. Now, um... One thing I want to mention before we start looking at the toys in his collection is I've talked a couple times on this uh, channel about Toy Fair magazine. Now, Toy Fair magazine was a, a magazine I collected for over a decade that I bought every month. Um, I did an episode recently where I sat back and I, I reviewed the first issue of this I bought page by page. Um, so, yeah, I loved this magazine. It was it's a funny magazine. It always had jokes about toys and showed you all the upcoming uh, action figures. And uh, me and Andrew had a little uh, competition to see who would get published in the letter page of Toy Fair Magazine uh, first. And so I got in there first. So this is the August August 2010 issue of Toy Fair. And so if we uh, flick along here to Fanfare, which is the letters page. This is the letter that I got published. So I was said, I know there have been a few action figures of the Crow now by various companies, and we even got a top dollar figure a while back. I'm just wondering if there's a chance the line could ever expand to include the henchmen like Tintin and T-Bird. I'd also really like a figure of the Ash version of the Crow from the Crow City of Angels. On a different note, is there any buzz on a Battle Beast revival at all? Maybe even just reissuing the old toys? So The Crow is my all-time favorite movie. There have been multiple figures of The Crow, um, of the actual main character of The Crow. I think there's one, yeah, there's one right behind my head here up on my wall. Um, so yeah, I've got various versions of The Crow. But I love that movie so much, I would like figures of all the characters in that movie. Like he has, it's a revenge movie, so he's going to kind of kill his way up the ladder to the big boss. And uh, I think McFarland Toys did like kind of a diorama set in the 90s where it was the crow versus Top Dollar, the main villain. But all the henchmen, they all had such character. And uh, yeah, I wanted those toys. Same as they made a bunch of crow sequels where a different character was the crow. And uh, so each one could have been a unique action figure. None of the movies were anywhere near as good as the first one, but the, the second one at least is, uh, is pretty watchable. So, uh, yeah, I was hoping that they would make some crow figures and maybe the guys at Toy Fair would have an inside scoop on anything that might have been coming down the pipeline. As for Battle Beasts, you can see those behind me as well. That's what those little figures are in these glass display cases. They're an 80s action figure line that had these little animals. And they seem to be one of the few 80s toy properties that's never really been properly revived. So um, this is what Toy Fair responded to me. Um... Wow, non-crow crow toys. I guess you never know, considering the movie is rumored for a remake at the moment. By the way, that still hasn't happened. Um, your chances of getting figures of third stringers from the original film, though, seem highly dubious. As for Battle Beasts, you're in better luck. 
Diamond Select Toys bought the rights to the name and will be producing mini-mates of armored animals eventually. Aside from touring shows and giving out free Battle Beasts to as many fans as possible, we do not have anything to announce right now, explains Diamond Select's Chuck to Sarah. We expect 2010 to be pretty quiet, with 2011 more the time frame for the wide release of Battle Beast products. Now, um, Diamond Select did eventually put out some of those mini-mate Battle Beasts, but they weren't anything like the original Battle Beasts. These were kind of like little Lego men. They were... They were totally different. There was no homages to the original toy line. So that wasn't what I was looking for. So unfortunately, uh, yeah, the questions that I had back in August 2010 uh, to this day have not been fulfilled. So hopefully we get there. So yeah, so I was published first in uh, August 2010, but not too far behind me. Andrew was published in this issue of January 2011. And he just made it in there because the March 2011 issue was the final issue of Toy Fair. Uh, after running for, I don't know, 12 years or something, the, this magazine was abruptly canceled. So yeah, he just barely made it. So um, Andrew actually gets the, uh, he's kind of got the highlighted letter here. They even attached like an image to go along with his question. So Andrew wrote, hey, Toy Fair. I recently started buying the new reissue Mighty Morphin Power Ranger toys through eBay because you can't get them anywhere in Canada and no online shop that sells them will ship them down here. My question is whether Bandai knows if they are ever going to be available in Canada and what they may be reissuing in the future. I need me a Dragon Zord and the originals are just crazy expensive on eBay. Andrew Vaughn, Johnny Everlove at gmail.com. So their response to him is... Or sorry, then Andrew actually had a PS. Although I have a burning desire to collect Mighty Morphin Power Ranger toys, I must clarify, I am not a crackpot. And then the answer is, easy there. If it weren't for crackpots, I'd be out of a job. I reached out to Bandai with your plea and got some good news. The Mighty Morphin, etc. will be hitting Canadian store shelves in the fall of 2011. It's the least we can do, considering all those seasons of Degrassi Junior High you gave us. Speaking of Degrassi Junior High, Andrew was a really big fan of Degrassi Junior High. Um, so yeah, I know, I don't know if Andrew got all the Power Ranger toys he was looking for, but I know he definitely got some, and we're going to take a look at them uh, now, that we, we're going to take a dive into his collection. So with Andrew's collection, once I got this news about Andrew, and I, I decided I wanted to do this video where I would talk about the toys he had, um, I had hoped to go over to Andrew's apartment and take pictures of his shelves and film maybe a little tour around his room. Um, unfortunately, with this COVID-19 stuff going on, it's not really uh, ideal for me to go over to his apartment building um, and be filming stuff. So I had asked his, uh, his roommate, Richard, if he could take some pictures for me. Now, uh, Richard was kind enough to not only take pictures of the shelves, but he actually took the figures down and dusted them off and cleaned them up so there's no cobwebs in, her, in the pictures, which is really nice. So I'm going to go through the pictures that Richard sent me, although unfortunately uh, Richard didn't have time to get any video footage. Uh, also, he mentioned that Andrew had a lot of his toys in storage bins, and he hasn't uh, had time to go through all that stuff. So what I do have are images that Richard took for me of Andrew's shells as they exist, and I went on to Andrew's Facebook and I pulled some pictures that Andrew had uh, of his collection. Some of them might be pretty dated um, from his old apartments and, you know, they could be years and years old. But I just wanted to find as much images as, as I could of his collection so I could find as much stuff to talk about. So, uh, yeah, we're going to dive into that. So here is the first image that Richard sent me. And by the look of things, it looks like these figures are just sitting on a coffee table between a couple of sofas. I don't imagine this is how Andrew had these guys displayed um, because I'm sure he would have knocked them over all the time. So I'm guessing these are figures that maybe Richard just threw here um, and able to take this picture for me. So uh, let's just talk about what he's got here. So this is a pretty eclectic mix of stuff. Um, so starting down in the uh, bottom left, We've got the three and three quarter inch red Hulk from the Marvel Universe line. 
And uh, I've actually talked about that figure quite a bit lately because I just got the new six inch uh, Red Hulk figure and I talked about that little figure in that. And also I just did a video uh, not too long ago where I reviewed my entire three and three quarter inch Marvel Universe collection. And I talked about how that Hulk was one of my favorites. So yeah, that's a pretty cool figure. Um, and I might have... I might have been with Andrew when he bought that. I think, uh, so when he went to New University, he went to New Brunswick, uh, and it was City Fredericton, and uh, he, he loved Fredericton, and I had gone to visit him in Fredericton while he was away at university, and then we had gone back together uh, on a trip once just so he could go back and visit some of his old friends from university. And on that trip together, um, which was just about 10 years ago, yeah, we bought a bunch of toys, and I think Red Hulk was one of those figures that he got. Um, next up, you see a little Homer Simpson there. I'm not sure what line that's from, but Andrew was a big Simpsons fan. Then we've got a Foot Soldier figure. So that Foot Soldier is from the Ninja Turtle line that I think was out around 2012 or so. Um, then there's a Darth Vader. Uh, that looks to be from maybe the Power of the Force uh, three and three quarter inch line. Then he's got a uh, an R2-D2 there in the other corner uh, and in between them we've got Finn so that's the six inch black series figure um, yeah seems like an odd choice I don't know if he really collected black series so yeah if he was only going to buy one figure I'm not sure why it would be Finn that's not the most exciting uh, character or figure but uh, anyway so now we'll start over on the right and we'll work our way back over so on the right we've got Catman, um, I think that looks like a Mattel DC figure. Um, and then we've got, um, coming over a little bit more, I hope you're following me here, but you see what's, the thing that looks like a, a Batman, that's actually uh, Azrael, who was a guy that filled in for Batman a little while uh, when Batman, when Bruce, when Bruce Wayne broke his back in the comic books and this guy stepped in as the new Batman. Um, so yeah, those both look like maybe Mattel figures. Yeah, in front of the Batman, we've got Abby Chase. So that's a member of the Danger Girls team, which is a comic book created by J. Scott Campbell. Those figures were created by McFarland Toys. I'm a big fan of those Danger Girl figures. Um, I have the whole set. Uh, it looks like Andrew might have just had Abby. Then we've got a Harley Quinn and a Supergirl. Um, again, they, they look like they might be Mattel figures. Then we've got a Pink Power Ranger. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a newer Power Ranger figure or uh, or an older one dating back to the 90s. Uh, if we go back a row, we've got a Freddy Krueger that appears to be like a, maybe an 8-inch doll. Then we've got a uh, Berber Gordon Batgirl. Then we've got a red um, Superman from the storyline where Superman got new, uh, new superpowers. And there was both a red and a blue Superman. I have a blue superman which is the exact same figure except painted kind of a baby blue and uh, i should mention both that superman and the red hulk figure are both based off of ed mcginnis's artwork which uh i think me and andrew were both big fans of so uh, then we scroll over so we'll skip past batman again and then we've got night owl from the watchman um behind him we got another freddy krueger doll this one looks like he's got uh, a different hat he's got a trench coat i'm not sure what movie that's from Andrew was a huge horror fan. Uh, me not so much. I'm a you know I'm a casual horror fan, but Andrew uh, he owned a ton of horror movies. He watches a ton of more horror movies. He watches a ton of horror documentaries. Um, he had dabbled into trying making horror movies at one point. So uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that he's got some horror figures in his collection. Um, then there's a Catwoman in blue suit kind of tucked away in behind there. You can't see her very much. Um, then there's a Green Lantern robot. That's uh, Stell, one of the Green Lanterns. Um, and what else we got? So in the back, I'll just go uh, from left to right again. Um, so this guy there, the big black robot, I assume that is a Power Ranger of some sort, um, but I don't know which guy it is. Um, then there's a Peter Venkman. So again, that's another like eight inch doll with cloth clothing, similar to the Freddy Krueger. Um, there might, there looks to be a little gray guy down in between Peter Venkman and Freddy Krueger. That might be a Krang from Ninja Turtles, but it's hard to tell. Um, then beside Peter Venkman, there's a little Joker just poking out there. The big black bear with the anarchy symbol. 
That's from a line of toys called Bear Bricks, which are kind of like vinyl collector figures. Behind him is a Flash from the animated series, and lastly, another Power Ranger figure. So let's move on to another shelf here. Um, I don't think I'm necessarily going to point out the name of every single figure from here on out, because I realize that might just take too long. So this here is another set of DC figures. It looks like Richard has just set these guys up on a coffee table as well. Uh, right up front there you see a little transformer. So that is one of the Dinobots from a company called Loyal Subjects that make kind of cute little deformed vinyl figures. Um, and then behind him there's a Casey Jones, again from that same toy line that the Foot Soldier was from, which I think is from uh, around 2012. Otherwise, it looks like pretty much everything else on this shelf is DC related, um, comes from various toy lines and probably even from various companies. Um, like right up front there, you see a Batman based on Darwin Cook's artwork. Um, Darwin Cook is a fan favorite artist who actually lived uh, here in Halifax and we saw him around um, and we lost him a couple of years ago too, which is a real shame. But yeah, his artwork was brilliant and uh, it was really cool that we got some figures based on his artwork. Um, let me see, you've got a green lantern in there too with the black and you see the green gloves and the green mask. Um, that's another figure based on Ed McGuinness's artwork, so that guy's pretty cool. Um, down the back you've got a dark side, a gorilla grod. Um, right in the middle there you see a Superman with kind of a purple outfit and white skin, so that's Bizarro Superman, again based on Ed McGuinness's artwork. Uh, DC Direct did a whole line of figures based on Ed McGuinness's work. Um, in the back there again, um, I'm forgetting what that red dude's name is right now. Um, then there's a Parademon in the back corner, a Doomsday, a Superman coming forward. Um, so yeah, he's got a lot of cool figures in here. Some of these are a mixed bag. Um, I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to buy all of these characters. For example, The Question or Dead Man, Booster Gold. These aren't characters I was ever really a fan of because I'm not a super hardcore DC collector. But uh, Andrew, who was, as I mentioned, a much bigger DC fan, it doesn't surprise me that he would have gone so deep into the uh, the roster of DC characters to get some of these guys. So yeah, a nice little collection of uh, uh, DC characters. Now here's another little shelf. Um, so I believe this is probably how Andrew had this set up. And this is an interesting little mix of things. So you can see here he's got a bunch more of those little deformed figures um, from the loyal subjects. So he's got a mix of, so on the far left, we've got Shockwave, who's that little purple cycloptic transformer. And then there's a couple of little South Park guys. Um, that Butters uh, was actually a little figure that uh, he bought. And then there's that little Kenny. He's actually uh, from a gumball machine. I have a bunch of those little uh, South Park guys as well. And then you come over, there's a G.I. Joe there. That's a battle android trooper. That little uh, three and three quarter inch figure in the black and the yellow. Then it looks like a Lego Catwoman on a motorcycle. And then you see all those Loyal Subjects figures. So he's got uh, Rocksteady, Krang, Shredder, Raphael, Leonardo, uh, Splinter, and Bebop. And that little white jet, that's Ramjet, just kind of tucked in there between Splinter and Bebop. And then if we work our way back from the right to left, so we've got Ivan Drago from Rocky IV. Then we've got Johnny from uh, the Karate Kid in his Halloween skeleton outfit. Those guys... I really like that he's got those two guys standing together because those are probably two of the best 80s villains. Um, you know, they almost overshadowed the heroes in those movies because they're just so great. Um, then he's got some more DC figures. So he's got a Batman there that's based on Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. Um, and then there's a Joker with the hat on there. Um, that's from the series The Killing Joke. In between them, there's a Spider Gwen. Um, and that looks like it's from Marvel Legends. Um, beside her, there's a Leatherface figure. I think that was produced by uh, maybe Funko. They're kind of in the He-Man style, and they're doing all these horror movie characters. Then there's a Superman figure, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a second. Then we've got a couple more Star Wars Black series. So there's Captain Phasma, as well as a First Order Stormtrooper. And behind them, we've got a Superman, a Batman, and then another Rocky figure, so that is Clubber Lang, as played by uh, Mr. T, and he was the villain in Rocky 3. 
So maybe I'm going to cut away from the toys because I want to take a second to talk about both that Superman and about the Rocky films. So just in regards to the Rocky movies, um, I mentioned earlier that Andrew's favorite movies are Ninja Turtles and Train Spotting. A lot of people that know Andrew would probably assume his favorite movie or series of movies is Rocky because he is obsessed with those movies. He talks about them all the time and how they inspired him in his comedy career um, because he always kind of felt like the underdog and he just he really related to those Rocky movies and uh, the funny thing is is I remember how resistant he was to watching those movies. Like, I remember when uh, the uh, the last Rocky movie, Rocky Balboa, came out, and I think it was around 2006, and I was so excited that that movie was coming out, and I absolutely loved it, and he just kind of scoffed at me for wanting to see it, and I think it was actually in the lead-up to the first Creed movie, um, which I think came out in 2015, so maybe a year or two before that, like when that movie was first announced that they were thinking of reviving the series. I think that's when me and Andrew, I first kind of said, man, I'm really excited they're bringing this back. I'm curious what they're going to do. And again, he kind of scoffed like, man, those Rocky movies are just stupid 80s movies with that idiot Stallone in there. Like he was not interested in the Rocky series. He had kind of written it off as just 80s garbage. And I was like, dude, we are watching these Rocky movies and you will see what I am talking about. And I remember I brought over my box set and we watched Rocky 1. And then we jumped over to Rocky IV, because that was my childhood favorite. Um, And then we were going to start Rocky VI, um, but we ended up, we ran, the the evening ran too late. We didn't get to watch it. I would have loved to watch all six of them back to back, but I ended up leaving that night and I said, I'm going to leave my box set with you. You finish these up. And I think he watched them all the next day. And after that, he was like a devout Rocky disciple and he absolutely loved them. So, uh, yeah, I love now that people associate those movies with him sometimes because he talks about them so much. But, uh, yeah, it was me that had to twist his arm to watch those things in the first place. Now, as for the uh, the Superman figure with the flag that I showed you in the last still, um, I really like that figure a lot. Um, so did Andrew. It was actually his number three pick when we did our top ten toys in our collection. So I'll let him tell you a little bit more about it. This is my number three, which is Red Sun Superman. Comes from a I have him. I always have him with his head turning to the side, holding the flag like that. I don't know why. It looks like he's looks like he's getting ready for battle. Like you know, like uh, Mike in the shot there. there just, you know what? You've seen the flag. It's a communist flag. There you go. We'll put uh, we'll put Superman up a little closer. Uh, so it comes from the Red Sun, which was DC. Uh, Elseworld story about what it would be if Superman landed in Russia instead of the United States, mm-hmm. uh, and I like I like the story like it's it's a good story I think you know uh, but I just I never thought they would make a figure with Superman with a hammer and sickle like uh, representing communism it's such a stark uh, opposition to everything they know about Superman being the red white and blue American flag bearer. And that's why I just, I love that there's a figure of it. I love that it's got the, the hammer and the sickle logo on his chest. And I even have the Wonder Woman that comes with him, and she's got more of the, the Russian colors on her outfit. But I just chose to bring him. And I can't remember who the artist was in that book, but it's kind of, you know, done like his style yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So it looks kind of like the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the toys you have, like, I don't have the same wrestlers as you, because yeah. I'm not into wrestling. But any toy that you have that I would want, I generally have. Yeah. I have all the same Masters of the Universe as you. And yep. This is the figure you have in your collection that I'm most jealous of. <laughs> in that I wish I had bought this when it had come out, uh, as well as the Batman with the kind of like oh, yeah. hat yeah. on and stuff. Um, I just, I loved that series when it first came out. I bought it when it was first released, and I loved the idea of these figures coming out, and I just, I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger at the time. But. Yeah, well, it, I just got lucky. I think I walked into Strange Adventures, and I have and I have them, and I went, yes, I've got money. I'll buy it now. Because it's one of those things I imagine now if you were trying to find, it's probably more expensive online yeah. than it would have been if you I don't know what now, but a couple of years ago, I know I tried to look, and you know, they were selling for like 100 bucks a pop or something, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, just... And then you know if they've ever re, like done another version of, of the Red Sun? I just that one looks like you said so much like the comic book. I don't think I would ever want a different take. I don't think they have. Yeah, actually. no. But yeah, maybe so, a pop or something. But and this is one of my once I get back in the toys, one of the longest you know one of the longest toys that I've had for the longest amount of time. So yeah. 
That's why it was my number three. Yeah, no, it's really nice. Yeah. So here's another one of the images that Richard sent me of Andrew's collection. So this is another kind of eclectic mix of things that don't really belong together. So starting at the very bottom there in the on the left hand side of the screen, we've got a cat lady, which is a figure that Andrew bought just uh, not that long ago. Uh, he just got a new cat uh, maybe a month or so before he passed away. And uh, it took him a while to get a new cat because he really, really, really adored his previous cat. And it took him a while to get over the loss of that cat. So uh, I think sometimes he felt a bit like a cat lady. So he saw that figure in some novelty shop and picked it up. Uh, behind that, there's a big Godzilla figure. And then there's Jaws. And he's chewing on a Quint figure. He's got that in his mouth. Um, I have both that Godzilla and the Jaws and Quint. Then we've got a vintage Hordak figure. Uh, if I had to guess, that's probably a figure from his childhood. That's uh, a toy from the 80s. Then we've got a Cobra Commander Mighty Mug. And those were kind of a precursor to the Funko Pops. They were kind of this cutesy, super deformed uh, kind of toy. And they made them in all kinds of different properties. So that's guy, that guy's from G.I. Joe. But they also had Marvel and you know other properties like that. Um, behind Cobra Commander, you'll see Mecha Godzilla, so that's from the same collection as the other Godzilla there, I believe, produced by Bandai. And then there is a Terminator exoskeleton climbing on top of the back of that uh, Mecha Godzilla. Next up, we have Wayne Manor, so that's Bruce Wayne's mansion. Um, I'm not sure which wave that came from. I think it was a toy line in the in the 90s. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. I think it opens up kind of like Castle Grayskull. I might have some other image of his. There might be some other images on Andrew's Facebook that I can find to show you what that looks like opened up. He's got a couple of Funko Pop Batman sitting on the balcony on the roof. Then he's got a Simpsons version of Britney Spears in the doorway. And then there's the DC villain Captain Boomerang hanging out in front. Now there is another item on the top of the roof of Wayne Manor. It's hard for me to see what it is, but it might be um, a DC Blamoid. Now, Blamoids, kind of like Funko Pops and Mighty Mugs, were another set of weird, super deformed figures. Um, he's got some pictures on Facebook that I can show you better. So here's a picture of a couple of Blamoids that he has. Um, or that he, and he, I'm sure he still has them, but I don't think he currently has them on display, at least judging from the pictures Richard sent me. So in the, in the middle of that cube, you'll see a Blamoid of the Creeper. And on the top you'll see a Blamoid of Sinestro. So these things were pretty weird. Um, but yeah, they had them on sale a few years ago. Me and Andrew both bought a few of them. Now here are a couple of statues that Andrew owns. Uh, he was not a big statue collector, and neither am I. I think there's some really incredible statues out there, but they're just really expensive to collect. Now, uh, first off, I just want to mention in the background there, you see something about thousands missing and feared dead. Um, that's a really cool little thing Andrew put together, um, which I'll talk about in the next slide. But so the, these three statues we have here, the first one is Owl Man, which uh, he's kind of like an evil version of Batman from an alternate universe. Uh, I don't remember where he got that one. It honestly doesn't seem like something he would have bought himself because I don't think he's necessarily a huge Owl Man fan. And that thing would have been probably more expensive than the things Andrew typically buys for himself. So I'm guessing that was probably a gift. Uh, but yeah, I think it's super cool looking. Uh, next up, we've got a little Lex Luthor bust. And that's something I actually bought for him. Um, our, the local comic shop here that we both shop at, Strange Adventures, they had a location on Sackville Street for many, many years before they had to shut down and move to a new location. And they had a bunch of knickknacks in their old store that were like hanging from the ceiling that weren't necessarily for sale. And when they were moving, they did an auction for all of the little items that they had hanging from the ceiling. And uh, I went to the auction and this Lex Luthor wasn't going for very much and I wanted to buy something. So I bought it and I gifted it to Andrew just because I knew he was a bigger DC fan than me. And then lastly, you see there, a uh, Catwoman statue. That was another thing that I bought him. Um, I think it was for his birthday, maybe? Uh, and yeah, that was something I saw in a store window of an unlikely store. Like, it wasn't from a comic book shop or anything. It was from, like, a, an actual, like, nice 
store where they sold clocks and jewelry and stuff and I just thought it was such an odd thing for them to have in the store window. I actually don't think it's an officially licensed Catwoman um, but I just remember seeing it and think it was kind of a sexy Catwoman and Andrew has always had a little thing for Catwoman which I'll talk about a little bit more later. So yeah I thought it was kind of fun and I picked it up for him. So yeah that's Andrew's statue collection. So back in 1992, DC Comics um, kind of pulled a gimmick storyline called The Death of Superman, where they actually killed Superman off in their comic books for several months. And even though they were publishing multiple Superman books, there was The Adventures of Superman, uh, Action Comics, Superman, he didn't appear in any of them. He was dead. So they had other characters as stand-ins kind of filling in the book. And when they released the comic book, um, it came in a black sealed bag and you know it was supposed to be this big collector's item I actually bought one and I never opened it. I still have it sealed. It's not really worth anything um, But what Andrew did is he bought one and he opened the bag and inside the bag There was this fake newspaper clipping from the Daily Planet Which is the newspaper where Superman works that talks about the death of Superman There was a black armband to mourn Superman, which is what the other heroes would wear in the comic book and uh, as well as some other knickknacks. So what he entered is he got it all mounted and framed. So he's got the, um, the cover of the actual comic book outside of the bag, so it looks kind of like a little gray tombstone. Then there's the black bag all flattened out beside it, the armband, the newspaper article, as well as a couple of the other little extras that were packed inside. And I just thought it looked really neat. Like, comic books often come with a lot of this extra junk, and I just end up throwing it in a bin somewhere. Um, but it really gave it some gravitas, I think, to have it all framed up like that. It, it made it seem like a real event, so I really like that Andrew did this. And it also came with a fold-out poster, which Andrew also had mounted, and he had it hanging beside this plaque on his wall. And so you see this poster with all of the DC heroes carrying Superman's coffin. So again, it's just a, you know, it's not a full-size movie poster or anything. It's, it's just a little, like, eight and a half by 11 kind of folded out by four but once you flatten it out and get it mounted uh, again it looks like a lot more of a prestigious item than it really was as just kind of a free add-in so yeah I really dig that Andrew put this together so this is Andrew's Masters of the Universe shelf so Masters of the Universe is one of my favorite toy lines and uh, yeah Andrew was a pretty big fan too most of the toys you see here, I think pretty much all but one, are from the Masters of the Universe Classics line, which is a toy line that started uh, kind of late 2008, early 2009. And these figures are all reproductions of vintage 80s Masters of the Universe figures, or as a lot of people know them as He-Man figures, since He-Man was the kind of the star of the property. Now, the one figure that's kind of front and center there is Man-at-Arms, the guy in the green and the orange, and he looks maybe a little bit shorter than everybody else. That's because he's from a different toy line. He's from a toy line that came out in the early 2000s, and they call that 2000X, and it was a little bit more stylized, kind of anime-influenced. So, yeah, he's got one of those figures. Everything else there is from the classics. So, yeah, he's got some great ones there, uh, kind of on the far left, kind of hiding in the back corner. You see kind of an interesting character called Horde Prime. Um, along the back there you get Buzz Off. Then there's uh, Mosquito with the red head up front. Then Catra, Prince Adam, Evil Lynn, uh, Adora. So Prince Adam and Adora, that's the kind of civilian identity for He-Man and his sister She-Ra. Then you've got Hordak, Clawful, Merman, and Stinkor. Now, uh, you're probably aware Merman is my favorite Master of the Universe character. Um, I'm not sure if he was Andrew's favorite, but I know he really liked him too. Um, and it was a real shame when I got that big new Merman figure, which I reviewed in my last video, that I never got a chance to show it to him, because I think it's something that he really would have liked. Um, when I was going through Andrew's Facebook looking for photos, I found this picture of Merman that he actually drew, which is pretty cool. And kind of another funny little thing is when he was doing a comedy tour a few months back, he was staying in an Airbnb and he sent me this picture of this painting that was actually hanging in the bedroom he was staying in, which looks like somebody kind of did a homemade painting of recreation of some vintage Master of the Universe artwork, which is just really bizarre. But yeah, it's a great collection of Masters figures here. Now, 
Now here we have some more Masters of the Universe figures. So on the left there we've got Castle Grayskull, so that's kind of the famous castle. Um, and that toy is from the 80s, that's the vintage Castle Grayskull. I'm not sure if that's something Andrew had from his childhood or something he picked up later. I'm thinking it's something he picked up later. I might have even been with him when he bought it to be honest with you, but I, I can't remember 100%. Um, then there's the little wizard Orko that's kind of floating in the doorway there. Then you've got Skeletor and He-Man, if you were wondering where those two guys are, since they're the main characters. And they're both riding their steeds, Panthor and Battle Cat. Now, a lot of these Masters of the Universe Classics figures, I didn't necessarily buy for Andrew as gifts, but I did actually purchase them for him because these figures were only available on Mattel's website, and there was a new figure available on the 15th of every month. And I ordered almost every single figure. So when I knew what figure was coming out that month, I would often ask Andrew and say, hey, it's going to be Skeletor this month or Battle Cat or whatever. Do you want me to buy one for you? And Andrew would often say, yeah, if you don't mind ordering it, and then I'll just pay you back for the figure later. So I was able to acquire a lot of these Masters of the Universe Classics figures for him. But um, that next one you see there, so the big horse, the big Pegasus, that is She-Ra, and she is sitting atop her horse, Swiftwind. Now, I did actually gift those to Andrew. It was a surprise for him. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was for Christmas one year. And, uh, yeah, he really loved those figures. Uh, I was really happy to see how joyful he was when I gave those to him. Um, it's kind of laughable because it's kind of the, I don't know, it's a kind of a girly figure. Um, but Andrew apparently always really loved She-Ra and Swiftwind when he was a kid. So to be able to get these for him was pretty great. And when we did our top 10 uh, video, he actually said this was his number one figure. So maybe I'll let him tell you a little bit more about it. So my number one toy is also a He-Man mm -hmm. uh, classics. And it, well, <laughs> She-Ra. I, I don't really know if I should hold it up or just sit it like that so you guys can sort of see a little bit of them while we talk. Uh, this is uh, She-Ra's. Uh, horse or whatever you Swift, Swift, Swift Wind. I grew up on He Man, but for some reason I loved She Ra. I have no idea what it was growing up. I loved She Ra, but they were very girly toys. Yeah. And I know it's kind of hard to say this isn't a girly toy because of the color scheme and everything on it, but it is so mighty and powerful. Like the veins in the legs here. It's a real, like, looks like that's a horse that's been, you know, really got muscle to him and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just really love Swiftwind. And you bought this for me yep. as a Christmas present, uh, along with the She-Ra, who I just left at home for this one, um, just because I do still love the She-Ra one, but I wanted to focus specifically on Swiftwind yeah. uh, in this. It's just such a great... Uh, I, it's just such a great character. A lot of the detail, the color is so vibrant, and uh, yeah, that's why it's my favorite one to have on my shelves at all time. I just love it. So now let's move on to one of Andrew's favorite collections. So this is some of his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this is kind of a variety of different Ninja Turtle collections here. So I'm going to start over on the far right. So you see up front, there's four Ninja Turtles there. You get all the four main guys. So Leo, Donnie, uh, Raphael, and Michelangelo. And so those guys are from the 2012 toy line that I've been showing you a couple other figures. He had the Casey Jones, the Krang, and the Foot Soldier on one of his other shelves. So that's a really cool collection. I really loved how the Ninja Turtles looked in this line. However, I wasn't a big fan of how most of the other characters looked in this line. So you'll see there he's also got the evil turtle um, slash that's kind of right in the front and center he's kind of a dark bluish green so he's also from that line and i'm not a fan of that figure um but like i said andrew was a much bigger turtle fan than me so he would buy things that i wouldn't normally buy um then behind slash you see there's shredder fugitoid which is that gold robot and splinter in his robes those are actually from the vintage toy line uh, from the 1980s Although those, at least Splinter and Shredder, might be actually reproductions because uh, at Playmates who made those original toys, they did re-release them in the 2000s that looked just like the vintage collection. Um, and along the back there, so you see all four turtles along with uh, Bebop and Rocksteady. Those are all current figures um, from a couple of years back. Uh, they were called 
Ninja Turtles classics, I think, and they're all kind of based on the animated looks, and those are pretty cool. But the ones on the far left are the ones I'm really envious of. This is a four-pack of Turtles. They all came in one package together based on the original black and white comic book from Eastman and Laird. And I remember they had that pack at Strange Adventures, and I didn't buy it, and then Andrew bought it, and I was kind of kicking myself because I love that these guys are based on the original Turtles when they all wore red bandanas. It's It looks like the original artist's work. It's, it's really cool. And those figures were also available in a black and white pack to reflect the original black and white artwork, which I also think is really cool. So one of these days, I'd like to either own the colored pack or the black and white pack. Great stuff here. Now here's another shelf with kind of an interesting mix of figures, a little bit of everything here. So he's got some DC characters, some Marvel characters. So starting on the far left, the big guy with the horns, that's, uh, I think his name's Magog from the DC story Kingdom Come. Then below him you see a bunch of the three and three quarter inch Marvel Universe figures. Now I said earlier that I think he might have bought that Red Hulk when we took our trip to Fredericton. I actually found the pictures of that trip and it turns out it wasn't the Red Hulk, but he bought that Green Hulk and that Thing and that Venom all on that trip. So here's an image of our haul from that trip. And here's a picture of me with some really awful uh, frizzy hair digging through my toys that day. Um, so also in this picture, you see a saber tooth figure that's from Toy Biz in the 90s. Um, a couple Spider-Man and Scarlet Spider and Doctor Doom Marvel Universe figures. Um, You've got some Marvel Legends in there, I think. I think that guy's name's Phantom X. Then you got a Wolverine and a Beast. Working our way back, you've got some DC characters there. So there's a Green Lantern, uh, Black Adam, Wonder Woman. This is the Wonder Woman that accompanies that uh, Red Sun Communist Superman in the back there. There you see another version of Sinestro with the pink skin and the yellow suit. So that was the guy he had a little blamoid of earlier. Then there's a Lex Luthor in the back. In front of him, there's the wrestler Rey Mysterio. Then in the back again, we've got Black Manta, who's an Aquaman villain. And that blue He-Man is a guy called Faker. And that guy, I believe our friend Guy gave that to Andrew for his birthday one year. Uh, the same year I gave him the Catwoman statue. And then to the far left in the back corner there, you see probably the most expensive toy that Andrew owns. That is a Hot Toys of the Catwoman from the Dark Knight uh, Returns. Um, the, I think that's the name of the movie, right? Anyway, so that's Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. And Andrew loved, he loved Catwoman before, but he especially loved it once it was played by Anne Hathaway. He actually got a life-size cardboard cutout of that Anne Hathaway, and he, uh, he proudly took pictures of himself with it, pretending it was uh, his girlfriend and such. And I promise it's not as weird as it sounds, but uh, yeah, he loved Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, and he loved this figure. So now here are some of Andrew's wrestling figures. So you see here he's got a little wrestling ring, um, which is to scale with all the little guys inside of the ring, which are produced by Hasbro. So yeah, he's got a bunch of those. In the center there, he's got a little mini Brock Lesnar. And then around the outside of the ring, he's got some like six inch scale wrestlers. Uh, he's even get, got one of the vintage 80s toys on the, uh, on the far left there. That's Davy Boy Smith of the British Bulldogs. So yeah, he's got a lot of cool wrestlers here. I'm not going to try and name them all because I don't know all of them. I'll, fl I'll flash some pictures here of some wrestling toys from his Facebook as well. But while we're talking wrestling, I do just want to tell a quick little story here. So Andrew, you know, he got to do a lot with his comedy. You know, he wanted to do a lot more. He had big plans to record a second comedy album this year and he wanted to tour the West Coast and it's I, I wish he'd get to do that stuff. But, um, you know, like we, if you're a casual wrestling fan, it's not super hard to meet wrestlers. Wrestling comes through town and they do autograph signings. I've met a few wrestlers, you know, in my time. I've got pictures of me with them. And Andrew has met some wrestlers too. Like here's a picture of him with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, which is a legend of the 80s. But as a comedian, he actually got to work with a couple of wrestlers. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts, who was one of the biggest wrestlers of the 80s, 
came through town uh, doing like speaking engagements and Andrew actually got to work with him. He hung out with Jake the Snake at his hotel. I think Andrew actually drove Jake to and from the show. He got to meet Jake the Snake's daughter. Like they hung out. And then Mick Foley, also known as Mankind, he also came through town and he was uh, doing a book tour, I think, and doing speaking engagements. And again, Andrew got to do a set to open up for him. So they worked together. Andrew could say he opened up for for Mankind and for Jake the Snake. And it's just crazy. And after Andrew passed, um, I just recently watched a movie called The Peanut Butter Falcon, um, which was really good. I definitely recommend it. It had uh, Shia LaBeouf, and he's working with a kid with Down Syndrome who's obsessed with wrestling. And in that movie, Jake the Snake and Mick Foley are both in it. And I was thinking, wow, this is a big movie. And Andrew has worked with both these guys. And it's just, it's really crazy, and it made me proud of him. Now here we have Andrew's Power Ranger shelf. So he's got a variety of figures on here. So kind of in the front and center, you'll see he's got four of the Funko Pops. Um, and then behind those, he's got some figures of various scales. So he's got a couple of like uh, six inch figures. Those figures on the far right, uh, the four of them there, that appear to be probably about nine inches tall. I think those are vintage figures um, from the 90s. So he might have had those since he was a kid. Uh, in the back there, those are a couple of the Zords, which are the big robots that the Power Rangers drove around in, I guess. Um, and then on the left side, so up front, you see that uh, little Power Rangers thing, that little silver box. Um, I think that's the like belt buckle or something the Power Rangers had that they had to press to activate their their powers to get their costumes or something. I don't know. I've, I've never watched an episode of, of this show. So that's like a little prop replica that uh, Andrew got himself. And then lastly, on the far left there, that uh, the big black and silver and green thing, that is the Dragon Zord. So that is the thing that Andrew was asking about in that issue of Toy Fair back in 2011. So uh, yeah, that was something that he really wanted. And uh, unlike me, who I never got any of the things I wanted back in 2010, Andrew did get this thing uh, a couple of years after writing that letter. And I know he was uh, he was really stoked about that thing. So that's really cool that Andrew got the Dragon Zord that he was hoping for. Now this here is some of Andrew's Funko Pop collection. He really started getting into these in the past year or so. And uh, yeah, he's been buying them up like crazy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Richard still gets a couple of them in the mail in the coming weeks that Andrew might have pre like pre-ordered from various websites. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to recognize everything here, but uh, kind of starting at the bottom on the uh, the far left. So you've got uh, Baby and uh, whatever Patrick Swayze's character was from Dirty Dancing. He's kind of obscured there, but that's who they are. Behind them, you can see the shark from Jaws. Along the front there, so he's got a couple of characters from the movie The Warriors, which is one of his favorites. Uh, then there's uh, Chucky from Child's Play. Then he's got Grumpy Bear the Care Bear. That's uh, Stephen King, the writer. Then you've got Triple H, the wrestler. And then the next guy there, he's from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I, I've never seen Dragon Ball Z. That's something Andrew just got into maybe the last two years or so. Somebody introduced him to it, and yeah, he got super into it. So he started buying those figures. Um, the row that you can't really see there if we work our way back. So I think he's got a, a Tupac there. And there's, I'm not sure who the next one is. I think maybe another Dragon Ball Z. Then a Mike Myers, a Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees. I'm not sure who's next. Then if we go up a row, we've got the three guys from Jaws. We've got a foot soldier from the Ninja Turtles. She-Ra and Hordak from He-Man. And then Hello Kitty. Then we've got uh, the Bill Murray character and like the Woodchuck from Caddyshack. Then we've got Nedry from Jurassic Park. Uh, I'm not sure who the chick with the green hair is. Then we've got Miles Morales Spider-Man and Groot from Marvel. Then we've got Bob Ross the Painter. In the back there you've got Gina Davis and Tom Hanks from A League of Their Own. And then you've got uh, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John's characters from Grease. Um, then I'm not sure who that other chick in the back is. And then you have 
uh, in the top corner there, you've got both the new and the vintage versions of Pennywise the Clown from the movie It. So yeah, his collection is kind of all over the place, which I like. So here's another shelf of Funko Pops, and this one appears to be at least almost entirely devoted to wrestling. Um, I think every character on that little, uh, that kind of little staircase in the middle, those are all wrestlers. Although I think a couple of guys on the side might not be. Like the, uh, the guy with the baseball bat down there, that might be another character from the Warriors. As well as the guy with the feathered hair on the left, uh, I'm not sure. Looks like he's got some roller skates on. I don't know what that dude is. Anyway, as I said with the last wrestling photo, I'm not going to try and name all these guys. I probably know most of them. He's got a Ronda Rousey, uh, Jake the Snake, looks like a Kurt Angle, Vince McMahon, Urban R. Scheister, uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, Mean Gene, and uh, Ted DiBiase in the back there. So he's got a good mix of guys from various generations of wrestling. Um... And then you'll see he's got two action figures on this shelf as well. So they're both wrestling. So on the left, you've got the kind of like zombified Undertaker. Um, I find this to be kind of a strange toy line, but this is something that's relatively new is they've got kind of a crisscross between like a mashup between wrestlers and like horror monsters. Um, I flashed the picture earlier of Triple H with like a skull face, which is kind of strange. And then on the other side there, that Macho Man, it's a little hard to tell, but that's actually a mashup between wrestling and Masters of the Universe. So that Macho Man comes with like a helmet and some armor so that he kind of looks like uh, the character of Man-at-Arms. And he also has a Rey Mysterio who is crossed over with the, uh, the Birdman from Masters of the Universe known as Stratos. And that was actually a figure I showed you in one of the previous images where it was Rey Mysterio with some like uh, wings strapped onto his arms. And uh, I guess the sad thing about that figure is that's actually the last thing me and Andrew talked about. Uh, he sent me a Facebook messenger to tell me that he found those figures at Toys R Us. And he asked me if I was going to pick any up. And I said, yeah, that Macho Man's pretty cool. I'm going to have to pick that up. And he told me how they, it came with a little mini comic, but they forgot to print some of the words. And uh, yeah, that was our last conversation. Now this here is the final picture that Richard sent me of Andrew's collection. And uh, yeah, this one, there's not a whole lot to talk about on here. So if I go uh, on the far left, there's another DC figure, also based on Ed McGuinness's artwork. And that is like the evil Flash, known as uh, Professor Zoom. Uh, right in the foreground there, he's got uh, Pennywise the Clown again. And on the far right, he's got the Masters of the Universe figure Moss Man, except for some reason it looks like he's got a Freddy Krueger head on him. Um, and then in the back, it's a bunch of Funko Pops. So he's got Kang and Kodos from The Simpsons, as well as all four members of Kiss and Crash Bandicoot. And then there's a couple of just uh, random Simpsons figures in there too. So you've got uh, Grandpa Simpson and Homer Simpson as King Kong from one of the Halloween episodes. Okay, so I think for the most part, um, that is the tour that I can provide you right now of Andrew's collection. Um, it's a real shame that because of this COVID-19 stuff, I can't go over to his house and take as many pictures and as much video as I would like. Um, but this video is already over an hour long, so maybe it's for the best. Um, I just wanted everybody to be able to see his collection. He was proud of it. Um, you know, he sometimes would talk about how small his collection was in comparison to mine, but, um, you know, I have a huge toy collection, uh, compared to a lot of collectors, Andrew had a very impressive collection. Um, you, you did only really get to see a part of it here today because I know he had a lot of stuff that wasn't currently displayed. So whether you know Andrew or not, uh, I appreciate you sitting through this and kind of walking through this with me. Um, this has been a tough video to shoot. Um, I had to stop a few times and re-record things just because I was getting choked up and pretty emotional. Um, 
and I even when I would come back I kept putting on the same uh, shirt I was wearing a transformer shirt at the start of this video it was actually a shirt Andrew had bought me um, because I wanted it to seem seamless but uh, I think my beard's been growing in over the course of the last three or four days so I might as well just confess that yeah I did have to shoot this video over a couple of days in order to get uh, get it completed so I'm gonna flash up a few things here on the screen um, just Again, images I found on Andrew's Facebook that um, I wanted to maybe at least show you or or maybe talk about a little bit. Um, but another thing I wanted to do is show you some of the toys that Andrew bought me. Now, this isn't necessarily all of them. Um, like, because when you've been friends with somebody for as long as we were, like, we bought each other stuff all the time. You know, at the very least, twice a year for, like, birthdays and Christmas. But sometimes we just, you know, surprised each other with gifts. And it wasn't always a big deal. Sometimes it was just like there was a, you know, a $15 transformer I was looking for. If he was out at the mall and he saw it, he'd buy it for me and give it to me. Um, so, yeah, not everyone comes with a big story. And some of them, you know, he, he would have given to me like 20 years ago. So I don't remember. Um, but, yeah, I have a few things here. Um, so one of those kind of simple little things that wasn't very expensive would have been this uh, metalhead. So this is like the robot Ninja Turtle character from the 2012 series. So as I mentioned earlier, like I really loved the turtles in that series. It started off really strong, so I thought the turtles looked, you know, really cool. But then all these secondary figures started coming out, and they were very underwhelming, except for Metalhead. Uh, I think he looks great. I think he looks way better than the vintage figure ever did. And I really wanted this thing, and I was having a hell of a time trying to track it down. And uh, yeah, this is one of the things that Andrew uh, just picked up for me one day. So that's pretty cool. Um, in my Marvel Universe video, where I talked about my entire three and three quarter inch Marvel Universe collection, um, I talked about one of the best figures in there was this Black Widow, because its likeness to Scarlett Johansson is actually, is actually really good. And uh, this was a figure that he knew I was looking for. And I felt a little bad, actually, because he, he used to frequent, uh, he'd go down to Maine because he had some family down there. And he would often bring me back stuff when he went on vacation down there. And uh, one time he was down in Maine, I found this figure for myself. But then he came back and he bought it for me and he was all happy that he found it for me. So I, I had to lie and I never told him that I found it myself. So I actually have this figure twice. But this is something cool that Andrew got me. Um, on another trip to Maine, you might have seen the, the big... Godzilla and the big Mecha Godzilla um, that I showed you in one of the pictures. I actually have those figures now. You can actually see Mecha Godzilla standing up on the shelf, uh, you know, behind me there. But at the time, uh, when Andrew came, he he came back with those toys, and I had never seen them before. I've been a huge Godzilla fan for a long time. I would say a much bigger Godzilla fan than Andrew was. Um, but sometimes things that I was passionate about, he kind of started to like just you know, through osmosis or something. But, like, I own all the Godzilla movies. I, I'm really into Godzilla. He's just, just kind of a casual fan. So we came back from Maine one day, and he had these two, like, big 12-inch figures that he got for himself. And he's like, these are so cool. I love them. And I, I admit I was very envious of them. But Andrew did buy me this Godzilla. So where those guys were, like, 12 inches, this guy's, like, a little 8-inch Godzilla. And so I did eventually track down the bigger ones for myself. But this is really cool that Andrew... You know, at least picked up this little guy for me. But I was pretty jealous of those big guys that he had for himself. Um, another thing here for a birthday. He got me a couple of Spider-Man, what I'll call dolls. Anything that has kind of cloth clothing. So he got me this like black Spider-Man. Um, it's like an 8-inch doll. With uh, the outfit here is, is cloth. So you can slide that off. So this is cool. Um, but the black Spider-Man, as cool as the outfit is, it's a figure that I've had multiple times in multiple formats. But besides this one, he also got me the Iron Spider, which is Spider-Man in his armor designed by Tony Stark um, that Spider-Man wore through the Civil War storyline. And it actually has some spider arms, which I misplaced here. One second. So yeah, you see there on the back, there's these three holes. Um, and he came with these three legs, which I had them all on him a moment ago, but they've all fallen off. 
But this armor was like pretty new at the time. They hadn't made any toys of it yet. So it was really cool to get this kind of armor, even though it was short-lived. But uh, not only to get a figure of it, but to get it in kind of an interesting format. So this was something that I really was uh, really stoked about at the time. And yeah, it's really cool. So thanks for that one, Andrew. And uh, another one that means a lot to me is... Um, so in 2009, I went on a European vacation. And while I was gone, Andrew bought this, which is Toad from, you know, the Mario video games. And he told me that he found himself a Toad and he was, you know, he was exciting. He's like, yeah, they only had one. I was going to get you one. Now, it's hard for me to really explain why, but I kind of have an attachment to this character for a weird a weird reason um but uh yeah I, I really love this dude and i really wanted this figure when these mario figures came out and i couldn't find toad anywhere i could find the other characters but for some reason toad was just really hard to find so i remember when he said he found the toad and i was like oh that's awesome that you found one but again i was a little jealous a little disappointed that i didn't have one for myself and uh then and andrew was feeding my guinea pig uh while i was away and when I came home from the trip and I came into my apartment, he actually had given me his toad. So I don't know if that was always his intention, if he was just going to, he knew I'd be a little jealous that he got me one, or maybe he just kind of had a change of heart and said, you know what, I'm going to give this to Mike. And so yeah, this guy was waiting for me on my keyboard and my computer when I came home from Europe, which was really cool. So thanks for that one as well, Andrew. And uh, speaking of my guinea pig, uh, it's just kind of funny. When I was going through Andrew's Facebook, looking at his pictures, um, and I found images of that Catwoman statue that I gave him for his birthday, he had a picture of the Catwoman statue, and behind it, there was the Dr. Phil weight loss book, and the caption said that for my birthday, Mike got me this Catwoman statue, and his guinea pig got me this Dr. Phil weight loss book, and I'd kind of forgotten about that, that I'd wrapped up a present from my guinea pig. And, uh, yeah, my guinea pig has an antagonist relationship, uh, with some of my friends. Um, unfortunately my guinea pig is no longer with us, but, uh, yeah, that made me chuckle. I had forgot about that. Um, another toy I want to talk about that Andrew gave me, um, which I believe was for a birthday is, uh, there was a, a box set, a kit where it said, create your own action figures. And Andrew bought one for himself and he bought one for me. And so it came with like three base figures and it came with a variety of heads. So you could have, you know, masked faces like Spider-Man or faces with like, you know, with a nose and a mouth and it had capes and it had a variety of things. And uh, so, yeah, it was a really cool set. Like the figures are pretty simple looking, but um, I've always wanted to be able to make my own action figures. You know, if I had the skills, I should probably buy a 3D printer and design my own toys, but that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. But uh, ever since I was a little kid, for as long as I can remember, I've always created my own uh, comic books. Um, like I told you before, that I, I used to do a lot more writing. And so I would write novels, and I'd write comic books, I'd draw my own comic books, and I had a whole cast of characters. Um, and when I was younger, like elementary school, junior high, most of those comic books were superheroes. And, you know, they were nothing great. They were basically knockoffs of, like, Marvel characters and stuff. But when I got this Create Your Own Superhero Figure Kit, it gave me an opportunity to turn some of my superheroes, characters of my own, into action figure form. So, I'll show them to you here. So this one here is Tiger. So this guy is, uh, this was kind of my main hero of my, of my superhero universe. So yeah, he was a dude with tiger powers. And yeah, he wore this uh, tiger-striped costume here. So this is actually pretty simple because his base costume was mostly white. So I actually didn't paint the figure at all. The figures were white initially. So I really just had to paint his uh, his red gloves and boots and then the kind of the tiger striped mast in the, on his chest there. So yeah, so there's Tiger. And then here's one of his enemies, the skunk. Again, pretty basic costume. And he's got a lot of white on him. So again, those those areas just aren't painted. You can see how these things are kind of cheap and the black paint is kind of like flecked off here over time. Especially if I started moving his arms and his knees around, I bet that would all crack off. But uh, still, it was pretty cool to be able to do this. And lastly, I have my kind of solar-powered character. Uh, and his name was Pulsar. 
So here you see Pulsar. And so this figure is completely painted with the blue and black and the white highlights. And I think he turned out pretty cool. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat that Andrew got me that set. And I'm not sure what he created with his set, but um, he had some fictional superheroes that he created when he was younger as well. And you might have noticed in some of the pictures I showed you of him, he's got tattoos on both of his forearms. They just kind of look like weird logos of some sort. So one of them is kind of like, and I hope he... I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this with you because people used to ask him what they meant all the time and he, he sometimes was pretty coy about explaining to people that, oh, these are logos from old superheroes I came up with. But yeah, the one of them, it's like a Superman symbol with a slash through it and that was for a, super mirror, a superhero he created called Zero Man. And uh, I, I think he co-created these with a friend, so I, I can't remember who it was right now, so I'm sorry I'm not giving credit to that person if they're watching this video. But yeah, so Zero... Uh, Zero Man was one of them, and the other one was Loser Boy. And so the Loser Boy logo is just kind of an L and a B kind of smushed together. So um, when Richard was taking photos of these toys, um, this figure wasn't on display, but he took some special pictures of this one. He said, hey, when I was going through Andrew's stuff, I found his custom figure of Loser Boy, which was kind of his avatar character. I think Zero Man represented the other guy. So uh, he had this Loser Boy. So here's some pictures of Loser Boy. Um, it's pretty scuffed up. The paint has flaked off uh, substantially, but um, yeah, it was pretty cool that this figure was supposed to represent Andrew at the time. Um, so what else do we get? Uh, here's an image of Andrew from a night we were partying where he was um, messing around with this rubber chicken and putting it in lots of uh, awkward poses and positions. And it kind of became a running joke with us that he liked to to enjoy the company of chickens and so one year for his birthday i made him this really lazy custom action figure i just found this figure of a little like a chicken character and i just added i changed the name of it and I added some you know some little jokes at andrew's expense um, but yeah this is a picture i found on his facebook that i had long since forgotten about this figure um he had some lego figures that weren't really on display there in the pictures provided by richard so, yeah, he collected DC Legos and Ninja Turtle Legos and Simpsons Legos. So he had a bunch of little brick toys. Um, he had a couple of Robotech toys here, which is pretty cool because that was another thing that I introduced him to. He was really skeptical about all, you know, Japanese cartoons. And I was like, look, I'm not into Japanese cartoons either, but I grew up on Robotech and it's really cool. It was so much more mature and intense than most of the other cartoons I grew up on. So I was like, you need to watch this. So... The hope was that we would watch all three generations of the Robotech cartoon. We only watched the first one, but it was enough to get him into it. So yeah, he bought himself a couple of Robotech figures. Um, he was really proud of his Dark Knight, like Batman action figure collection. Um, you see here he had it displayed up on his shelf for a while. I don't know if he currently does in his in this setup, but he had all three DVDs displayed with the figures from each movie set up beside them, and it was it was just a pretty cool setup. Um, so he had six inch figures of all these characters, including his beloved Anne Hathaway Catwoman. Um, here's a picture of the turtle van. This is some, this is the vintage eighties turtle van. So this was something I know he was really proud of, but, uh, it wasn't on any of the pictures in display. Um, he had a couple of transformers, nothing crazy, but, uh, I wanted to mention those same as GI Joe. He wasn't, he didn't grow up on GI Joe, but because I was so passionate about it, he got into it. And when I would go buy figures, he would sometimes pick up a couple. And he actually ended up with a pretty decent G.I. Joe collection, in including some of the vehicles like uh, the Sky Striker here. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, last thing I'll mention, I think, is so I had the 80s wrestler Kamala. So I had the 80s figure, which was just a big hump, hunk of rubber from the company LJN. And in my old apartment, well, actually for multiple apartments, whenever I moved and stuff, sometimes I had toys on display, sometimes I had less toys on display. But for whatever reason, I would always take my Kamala figure and I would put it on the back of the toilet in every apartment I was in. And uh, it was just kind of this running gag. Andrew always got a kick out of the fact that I had Kamala in my bathroom. He had actually taken a picture of it. Um, and so, yeah, when he bought his own Kamala figure... Uh, he had that displayed in his bathroom on the back of his toilet bowl, so it kind of became this weird running thing. I, I don't, I don't know why. Um, 
And another little toy I wanted to mention here is so when I went to Europe, um, I tried to buy figures for myself to represent the cities I was in. So when I went to England, I bought Doctor Who figures. I'm not into Doctor Who, but you know it's a very English, you know, very British show. So I wanted to get them there. Um, I, when I was in like France, I bought like a French Spider-Man comic book. I just wanted to find any kind of nerdy thing that would remind me of that city specifically. And when I was in Rome, um, I found a little store selling uh, little like Papo figurines. These things aren't hard to find. You can usually find them kind of like educational toy stores, like little rubber dinosaurs and little rubber animals. But so this store was in like, I was at the Colosseum, like where gladiators used to fight. And there was a store and you could see the Colosseum from there. And so they had a bunch of whatever junk, but then they had these gladiator figures of like a rhinoceros and a crocodile and like human gladiators and they had all these weapons and stuff i was like i've got to buy these gladiator figures um because they're right here in rome outside the coliseum and i shudder to think i think they cost like 15 euros each or something which is uh, translates to about 30 bucks canadian and when i came back to canada it was maybe like a month later i went into a store here in the mall and it was like an educational toy store, which I don't normally go into those stores. But I went in there and they had the same things. And they were like eight or nine bucks Canadian. So I had paid like 30 bucks. And I was like, Ugh. Anyway, besides the figures I bought for myself, I bought Andrew this little caveman figure. And the reason I bought him this caveman is because at the time, there was this Dorito commercial on TV. It was very random. I think they had a contest where people could create commercials and submit them. And they would play these different commercials and people could vote for which one they liked best. It's, it was a long time ago, so I don't really remember. But there was this commercial with the caveman. And I think I'll show it to you here. Hey, you should check out my ad on DoritosGuru.ca. What, you made an ad? Yeah, I talk about the new Doritos chip and dance around. Just watch it. If I win, I get a heap of cash. Why would I watch it? So yeah, that punchline from the commercial, which doesn't make any sense. I don't really understand it. But when the caveman says, Chip Hat, that's, that was kind of an inside joke. We would say it to each other all the time. I don't even remember the context of us always saying, Chip Hat, to one another. So when I saw that caveman, I was like, that's the caveman from the Chip Hat commercial. So I bought that for him. And I remember he was excited about it at the time. But uh, yeah, we've long, I've long since forgot the joke or why we even necessarily found that funny. But uh, so there's that. And I think the last thing I'll leave you with is this is something I looked forward to every year. Is around Christmas time, Andrew would kind of decorate a, like a shitty little Christmas tree. And usually instead of a star on the top, he'd put like an action figure. And at the base of his tree, he would always create some sort of nativity scene out of his action figures. Um, so he's got a few pictures of his nativity scenes posted. So I thought I would share those with you. Um, I always get a kick out of them. And I'm going to miss seeing those. You know, maybe I'll have to do a little nativity scene this Christmas in honor of Andrew. So I think that's everything I have to say. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you appreciate this, Andrew. And uh, yeah. Ciao.